Okay, um, so I think while uh, the evening for or the workday for Tao um, is ending late, I think we, our next speaker is uh, starting very early. So we have with us uh, Hongmin Fang, the director of product marketing of Longji Solar. And uh, Hongmin is uh, based in uh, Longji's California office, or at least at the moment at home. And uh, that's very early. Um, so I'm very glad that Hongmin could join us so early. Um, Hongbin will talk to us about value proposition of high power bifacial perk modules based on M1082 millimeter wafers with uh, Hongji not only being um, a big module manufacturer, but also the world's largest wafer manufacturer. Hongbin, the floor is yours. Thank you, Michael. Let me share my screen here. Okay, hello everyone. Yeah, this is a Hongbin fan. Uh, the title of my presentation is a value proposition of high power bifacial perk modules based on M10 182mm wafer. I'm glad to have this opportunity to, uh, to share our learnings and uh, experience uh, with you guys and uh, hope you enjoy it. Yeah, my presentation will uh, mostly focus on five parts. First, I will share the, our understanding on the benefit of a high power modules. And, and then we'll uh, discuss how is uh, M10 182 millimeter wafer size is determined. Uh, and then we'll, I will share a brief intro of our uh, HIMO 5 modules, which is based on M10 182mm wafer. Uh, and then I will focus my discussion on comparing M10 182 versus you know, G12 210mm module. And I hope to share that the bigger is not always better. I, I'll end my uh, presentation with a short discussion on future directions. Why do we want to you know, develop you know, ultra high uh, power module. And if you look at, you know, the whole PV industry is focused on LCOE, right? If you focus on uh, LCOE uh, equation uh, for the numerators is the cost. It's the system cost, right? Including uh, the module cost and the BOS cost and so, and a few other uh, associated finance and OEM cost. Right? On the denominator is the lifetime energy yield of the whole system. Right. This is uh, you know, the first energy yield and also as well as uh, taking into consideration of module reliability. Right. The main benefit of high power modules is on BOS savings. With the increase of stream power, with the fewer streams can be uh, integrated uh, and also saving on the tracker and as well as the electric component. Okay. While we can, you know, high power modules can save on BOS, the other aspect of LCOE equation need to be evaluated simultaneously and cannot be compromised. Otherwise, uh, otherwise uh, the value of the high power modules are diminished. And consider if you only, you know, BOS is saved, but if the module reliability is not good enough, it can compromise on the lifetime of the, of the system and the lifetime and yield which is not going to you know, uh, demonstrate lower LCOE. So the new module design should ensure minimal reliability risk, controlled manufacturing cost, as well as uh, superior energy yield through the lifetime. There are a few approaches to increase uh, the module power. Uh, historically, significant module power improvement has been achieved through cell efficiency improvement and we have historically from multi, micro, uh, shift from multi to mono to mono perk, right? With the incre incremental improvement on cell efficiency, which help to increase the module power. And also there, you know, module technologies that can be implemented to help improve the module efficiency and the power. I, uh, in the last couple of years, the main market shift is, uh, is on uh, half cut and multi bus bar. Right. Industry also explored, you know, approaches of increasing um, wafer and the module size to improve the power. 
And like 10 years ago, people use M0. This is 156 millimeter wafer. Before that, it's even smaller, like five inch. And about seven, eight years ago, that Longji started M2, which is a small increase on the wafer size and, and a small incremental increase on the, on the module uh, power, which help you know, the industry to uh, increase the, uh, the power on a more aggressive you know, scale. And in the last few years, the M4 uh, size introduced. And last year, right in 2019, Longji introduced M6. So uh, I think so uh, today I focus my discussion on how we increase the uh, wafer size to improve uh, module power output. Here's a you know, rough uh, plot you know, uh, versus the, the how how we demonstrate uh, BOS savings versus you know, uh, cell and the module power. Right? The key reason is that the increase of stream power with the larger size cell and the modules. And so that for the same MAG1 uh, uh, power plant, you will have a fewer modules, fewer strings you need to be uh, integrated. So can saving on, on, on both you know, tracker cards as well as the electric component. And, but there are other approaches, right? You can increase the number of cells, you know, to bring, uh, to, to improve the module power, but that approach uh, brings very limited value because, you know, while you increase the number of cells, the voltage for each module is increased, the fewer uh, modules can be integrated in each, uh, in each string. So the total power output for each string is uh, about the same. Uh, Okay, let's look at the, how we, you know, uh, apply the larger size wafers. And uh, first discuss M6. Uh, in the last few years, I think there are quite a few uh, different wafer sizes uh, came into marketplace. And uh, after thorough analysis, and um, we, you know, uh, analysis of the current cell module production line compatibility, and also looking at the upgrade cost, we came to uh, conclusion that M6 spec is a, is, a, is a good size for the whole industry. And, and also, you know, M6 is suitable for both, you know, residential rooftop and CNI applications, as well as a utility scale po uh, power uh, plant. M6 has, uh, you know, uh, has been ramp up very, you know, uh, nice successfully, right? Since we introduced M6 in, in the market last year, 2019, we have shipped more, uh, shipped more than 10 gigawatt of HIMO4 modules, which is based on M6 wafer uh, since then. And late last year, uh, G12 was introduced in the marketplace, right? And so, but, so, so the wafer size, is, this wafer size is derived from the semiconductor wafer diameter of a 300 millimeter. When you cut into a, a square, become a 210, right? And the emerge of G12 make people think that what is the you know, optimal wafer and the module size if you are not constrained by existing production capacity. And also, you know, if we remove the rooftop uh, product compatibility uh, on the side, and then we can develop a product for the best suited for large scale power plant. But is, is it necessary to unify the semiconductor and the PV silicon wafer size? When the wafer and the cell become larger, the design of PV module and system will change greatly. This is not like a semiconductor. When you increase the wafer size, the, the each chip, the size does not change. What's improved is the number of chips on, 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 the, on the wafer which improve the throughput, improve you know, the, the cost, manufacturing cost of a silicon chip. But on the module side, this is different. That side can stay with the, you know, uh, with the wafer, with the module, and then you need to use the larger size modules in the power plant. So we need to evaluate the whole process of manufacturing the module and also deployment of the module. And so, so that you know, make sure there's no compatibility issue. And let's first look at the G12, you know, module size. And, and first, you know, I think the, the, the G12 started on five row, three, a triple card. That works around the G12 wafer application challenges, right? But it is a compromised design with a reduced benefit. The G12 triple card reduces the, the module current 
to close to you know uh, the the historic uh, module uh, uh, the current, but higher voltage right limits is the BOS savings, and also on the module the five row design makes the module with in line with uh, the industry norm, but extra southern ribbon resulting in extra power loss and the module efficiency reduction. It also introduces complexity in, in, in the production process. Uh, so, and then came out, you know, the G12 half cut modules that will lead to, you know, higher current. The ISC is more than 18 amp. And if you take for the monoperc, for the bifacial, the ISC is more than 20, which will result into higher resistive loss, substantially higher hotspot risk and the activated junction box failure. Uh, the width of G12 six row module design is 1.3 meters, which is compromised, which compromises on shipping quality uh, performance in, in the 40 foot container and then limited glass supplies, as well as a module mechanical loading strength. So for, so when we look at this, we, we try to see, okay, what's the optimal size for if you want to design from scratch? So we look through the whole module manufacturing process as well as module deployment process, right? If you look at the existing equipment from the Inger wafer cell and the module, we, we check into material supplies as well as you know, potential manufacturing yield. On the reliability side, if you look at the mechanical loading, hotspot and so on and so forth. And it turns out, you know, when we look at the module transportation and that become one of the the key limiting factors. And, you know, most of the uh, intercontinental uh, shipment is, is down to, uh, is using a 40 foot container. The, the container opening height is 25, 70 millimeter, right? If you take, take out the margins for operation and then the pallet packaging you know, size, and then came out, you know, the current BKM for loading the modules, right, in the, in the container, to minimize the module damage during shipment is, you know, within each pallet, module are standing vertically with a landscape orientation, right? And the double stack of pallet inside the uh, 40 foot container. And with that configuration, the module size, you know, is made, uh, limited at about 11, 30 millimeter, right? And if you do six row design, that's, you know, translate into 182 millimeter for each cell. So that's how the 182 millimeter is derived. It's determined according to the module width. And then we went back to check, you know, uh, verify the compatibility through the whole uh, value chain, right? The manufacturer feasibility, the high cell uh, manufacturing yield, and also supported by new glass production capacity. The reliability, there's no major, you know, uh, obvious uh, uh, challenges and the risk are present. And as well, you know, we also check the system compatibility uh, as well as uh, how the module ins is installed in the field. So overall, if you look at the whole process, there's no major challenges or risks are uh, present. So using 182 mini wafers, we integrate uh, to make uh, HIMO5 modules, right? Uh, our HIMO5 modules is based on M10 182 millimeter gallium doped mono wafer. Uh, it's based on P-type PERC technology and 9BB half, half, half cut uh, cell. It's a conventional six row 72 cell module design. A, on this module, we also integrate a smart soldering technology. This is a technology using integrated segmented ribbons. On the front side, it's a, uh, it's a triangular shape to maximize the use of uh, light absorption. And on the, you know, and then on the back side is a flat section. On the band is a, is a you know, fl also flat, enable us to achieve a micro gap between the cells. And by reducing the cell space, we can, you know, improve the module efficiency by 0.3%. Okay, let's compare M10 and then G12 uh, uh, modules. Right. We're trying to standardize the product so that whole uh, supply chain can work on a uh, simple platform, can achieve, demonstrate the best uh, compatibility and the performance. The 182 millimeter module, right now the top three uh, manufacturers, 
long G gene code and GA or choose to do 180Q, right? This is, uh, so we have a uh, substantial uh, capacity. This main product in the future minimizes supply risk. Uh, on the wafer and the cell, and now 166, M6, and then M10, 182 become two standard product can serve different uh, applications. On the system equi uh, equipment side, the string inverter with the minor upgrade to 15 amp is compatible with 182 millimeter module. And the tracker length uh, limit can be a com can accommodate the same string length for 182. And on the module width side, there's a 1.3 meters uh, with our 182 millimeter module. And the glass capacity is com uh, compatible. The new glass capacity is compatible. The old capacity can be upgraded. Only small portion of the glass capacity can accommodate the 1.3 meter uh, module that's required for the G12 modules. And the 1.13 meter module shipment, uh, as I explained, can maximize the container space utilization with the best loading practice, right? With a minimal uh, transportation damage possibility. And so the wider modules are the 1.3 meter will increase the risk of damage during the shipment. And then look at the module cost, right? And the wafer side, and uh, we're using 210 millimeter wafer, uh, probably gonna cost a little bit higher because of slower inger pulling speed with a larger diameter uh, inger that need to be pulled, more difficult to control the, the oxygen uh, content. The wafer thickness may also need to be increased slightly to maintain mechanical strength and lower the slicing yield. On the cell side, because of the economic scale and use larger wafers may have slightly improvement on the, on the cost. But on the module side, the 210 millimeter uh, uh, module will cost slightly higher as well. The high current increase uh, the residual loss and result in lower efficiency, which is a, a cost adder and the higher frame is required, uh, strength is required for wider uh, width of the module. And also the big current junction bars is not mature and the cost could be high. Let's look at the, the system cost on the BOS side. And uh, let's first look at the horizontal single ICO tracker. On the 1P tracker, due to the limited tracker length and each 1P tracker can accommodate either three string of 182 module or two string of 210 modules. The total power output per tracker actually is higher, you know, about 10% higher with a, a 182 million module. And so we have done some estimate with the partners then that the cost per watt, it is lower actually with the 182 million module on the single S, one piece single ISO tracker. On the 2P tracker, the each year 2P tracker can install four string of 182 modules and the three strings of 210 modules. With the, but 210 will require less desired cross-site stringing configuration. Right. So the total power per tracker are about the same and uh, between 182 and then 210, but requires a longer slightly longer length for the 210 module. So on the average, so the cost per watt is, uh, is slightly better for 182 millimeter module on the 2P tracker. On the BOS side, and with the 210 millimeter uh, modules, the longer string size, so fewer strings, the cable cost, cabling cost could be slightly lower, but you know, because of the significant higher current. And so if you take into consideration of the resistive, cost, resistive loss, the, the, the total cost actually is higher with a uh, 210 millimeter module. Let's also look at the installation practice. 182 millimeter module, the width is uh, 1.1 meter. It's still within the natural spread width of uh, arm uh, well, the 210, the 60 cell module requires significantly uh, larger uh, stretch of your arm, right? So repetitive stretch during the installation uh, will result into fatigue and, and lower the productivity. And also significantly higher weight with the 210, 60 cell and the 60, 66 cell modules will add stress and result in uh, higher installation cost. If you do a quick, you know, LCOE calculations and BOS considering if you assuming the same module price, right? The BOS cost slightly higher with a 210 millimeter. And also 
you know, uh, their data showing that 210 millimeter module, the working temperature is slightly higher, say just one degree can result in slightly uh, drop on the energy yield. Uh, assuming the same degradation uh, profile, the LCOE actually is uh, slightly lower with 182 millimeter modules. So the cost is uh, slightly better with 182. The more important actually is the reliability side. Uh, let's first look at the, the hot spot, right? And the hot spot, we, the, the bottom table compares the hot spot, uh, the power yeah, uh, for each uh, different modules. Uh, start from M2, M6, and 182. We also have a measurement, you know, hot spot temperature measurement for these uh, three modules. They correlate pretty well with the hot spot power, uh, at least on the table. And if you look at the extrapolate from this uh, uh, result, you would expect a 210 millimeter, either 56, uh, 55 cell module or 60 cell module, both going to show higher hot spot temperatures, and which you know is not desired, which increase the uh, reliability risk of the uh, whole system. And the other aspect, let's look at the junction box. The 182 millimeter module choose the 25 uh, AM junction bar, still be able to use a single diode design. And the junction temperatures, the thermal runaway properties are better than 166 uh, module in standard test condition. The 210 bifacial B current module require at least a 30 AM junction box, right? Even with a 30 AM, 30 AM design, you have almost no safety margin. Right. So if you look at the table on the, uh, uh, on the bottom, you will see that this require a dual diode, uh, parallel diode design, which itself is, uh, is new to the market, will increase the failure rate. Besides the uneven of two parallel diode will increase the risk of failure caused by uneven current split. Right. So even using the 30M junction box, almost no safety margin is included in design, increasing the failure probability. So what are the next steps? If you look at the LCOE uh, equation, and uh, we, you know, trying to lower the cost and by, by increasing the, the, the wafer and the module size. And now the, I think the next step, you know, we just see that when you increase the module size, uh, the, the wafer and the module size even bigger, the benefit is very limited. At the same time, introduce a lot of, you know, re reliability risk, right? This is not design at all. So we think, you know, going forward, and uh, the focus will be focus, uh, will be on the module efficiency improvement, either through you know a higher efficiency cell technology or module technology that imp that can improve the module efficiency. The other approach is uh, going you know through the bifacial uh, technology that right? can improve the energy yield uh, on the denominator. Right, so our folks, you know, I think there in the next few days there will be a lot of discussions on higher efficiency cell technology. So today I, you know, I briefly talk about bifacial technology. Right, so the bifacial uh, technology improved NGO by not only absorb light from the front side, but can also harvest light from the back side. Right, so we introduced uh, bifacial modules in the market uh, back 2017. We launched the HIMO two. Uh, during the snap of 2017. Since then, we have, you know, we have seen the come one more customers are comfortable with adopting uh, bifacial technology. And starting last year, right, almost 100% of our shipment to the US utility project actually are bifacial, right? By, by this month, actually Longji already shipped more than 10 gigawatt of bifacial modules uh, globally. Uh, if you look at the ITR PV roadmap, that demonstrate that uh, currently the, the marketplace, I think uh, bifacial accounts for about 20% of the market share in 2020. And Longji right, currently is shipping more than 40% of our, more than 40% of our current shipment are bifacial. Right, to help our customer to uh, be comfortable uh, adopting bifacial modules, uh, bifacial technology, we have been uh, setting up a lot of working with the third party labs and customers to step uh, uh, outdoor field, uh, test field to validate the bifacial performance, right? We have uh, a test field in, in, in uh, Saudi, in India, in China, as well as in, in North America. 
which uh, demonstrate a very consistent, you know, uh, backside MDU with the different configurations, either fixed tail or tracker, and, and also on different uh, background condition, uh, the ground conditions. So far, we have shipped more than you know 10 gigawatt of uh, bifacial perk modules globally, and so the latest Bloomberg uh, bankability survey indicate that 100% of the respondent considered bifacial is uh, uh, bankable. Right here, list uh, a few uh, bifacial project uh, uh, globally, right, uh, in all the continents that we have demonstrated bifacial capabilities. So in conclusion. I think the, the wafer size shift from M2 to M6 to M10, the increase the wafer size and the module size has been an effective approach to increase the module power output and then reduce BOS and LCOE. The size of a PIM module is not always the bigger, the better. It is necessary to comprehensively consider all aspects of module manufacturing process, as well as the deployment process including transportation, installation, and the long-term reliability, and to evaluate associated risk. Considerable risks are present you know, with the 210 millimeter modules on the right-hand table, right? And the M2, uh, M10 uh, 72 cell module uh, is the optimal module design for large-scale PV power plant after evaluating the whole value chain, considering all the aspects of module manufacturing process and the deployment process. A future effort to lower the LCOE will focus on module efficiency improvement to reduce the BOS and the bifacial technology adoption to improve energy yield. Yeah, I think I'll end my discussion here. Uh, thank you for your attention. Thanks, Songmin. Uh, that was uh, a great, uh, great overview. Maybe one, one question um, regarding your role as wafer manufacturer. Longi, Longi is the world's largest wafer manufacturer. Um, so what kind of um, products will, will you offer in the future to, to serve your, your clients? So going to the future, we, as I explained, I think we are looking, you know, uh, doing both 166 and 182, right? So that's also our options for our, our wafer side. Okay, okay. Um, there was one question regarding wafer thickness reduction. So with larger wafers, so what do you think, how, how thin can you go? Actually, I think Jutta showed that also this morning in her presentation, but from your, um, from your view um, as, as a wafer manufacturer, so is, uh, and then, and what's the, the optimal thickness you, you think uh, for, for the different sizes? But different size. So far, I think we have been able to use the same, you know, thickness and you the same thickness of uh, yeah, 182 versus 166, right? So going as the, the the production as the industry getting more mature, hopefully we can uh, continue the path of uh, thinning down the uh, wafer thickness gradually. Okay, and then, and what do you think? Where 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 could we be actually? So also with um, P, especially with P type perk actually. So where where do do you think um, um, will could could you give us um, maybe a number? I so, guess you know people have been predicting thinner wafers and for P perk, but that has that progress has been relatively slow. I think uh, you know basically. Uh, the industry, uh, as the wafer size increases, that progress may be a little bit slower. Uh, and so I think, uh, you know, this is really the, the, the whole supply chain need to come together to evaluate the thinner wafer to see it, how much and how fast we can, we can uh, make it thinner, right? But that direction is, uh, is for sure gonna happen. And uh, you will see that, you know, what is uh, happening on 166, but it's 182 uh, getting, uh, more mature, I think that will con that path will continue. Okay, there was also another question on on wafers. So um, regarding n type wafers. So um, so what, what's your what's your strategy there? Actually, we we can make n type wafers, and you know any time we can switch the production, you know to n type. Uh, put 
you know, back and forth. And so we are also supplying N-type wafers as we speak, right, to other technologies, you know, uh, but with a smaller uh, wafer size. Okay. But with think... N-type, it can be done, right? So I think on N-type technology adoption, uh, the wafer is not a bottleneck, right? So the main challenge actually is the cost associated with, uh, with the N-type cell. But we have seen that gap getting smaller and smaller, right? And so this will be interesting to watch in the next in the in the next you know couple of years. N type may you know come up you know uh, to to be more cost competitive compared to people. Okay, okay, um, Hongwen, I think there's we could probably answer questions for many many <laughs> hours. Um, so, but I think the 